Arrays, lists, and other types of collections are used all the time in programming. In fact, most programming languages will have some sort of like for each or for in loop that you can use to go through these arrays and make changes to them. But in functional programming languages, you can't make changes to the collections themselves. And in fact, if you want to have a for loop with an index variable, well, you can't do that either because you can't mutate variables in functional programming languages. So how are you supposed to deal with all of them? Well, it turns out that there are three main functions that you can use and a lot of other functions that are probably based on these. And these exist probably in any language that you've ever used. Those functions are map, filter, and reduce. Now, if you go into your favorite language and you look up these functions, you might not find them. Make sure you go online and check Stack Overflow or Google or something, because sometimes languages, for whatever reason, decide to come up with their own names for them. For instance, in C-sharp, map is called select, filter is called where, and reduce is called aggregate. Now, each of these functions are good at doing different things. For instance, map is good at changing the elements in the collection. Filter is good at removing the ones you don't want. And reduce is good at taking all of the elements and combining them into a single value if you want. Now, I do want to mention that reduce has a lot of other uses, and it's kind of the, the sort of quintessential abstraction of recursion, but I'll talk about that in a couple of videos down the road. So be sure to look for that video in the series. I want to talk about recursion first before we get too much into that, but reduce is kind of a special one. Having said that, it's a little bit more complicated. You definitely need to know how to use it, but you're probably going to use map more than anything and filter when you need to as well. Now, it's a little bit advanced, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it here. Sometimes you might think, okay, well, I actually need some sort of looping mechanism, but I don't have a collection to base it off of. And a lot of times this is because you're generating a sequence of numbers. And we'll go over an example of this in just a moment. But the basic approach that I think about a lot of times when I run into these situations is that I need to, if I don't have the collection, then I need to generate it. Okay. So let's take an example. We'll, we'll take the classical example of a factorial. Now, factorial is usually used to demonstrate how to use recursion. In this video, we're going to use it to show you how you can avoid using recursion. The first thing we want to do is generate a collection of numbers from n to 1 or from 1 to n. It doesn't really matter. And then after we've done that, we simply take that collection and send it to the reduce function. You can generate this collection of numbers using a list comprehension in a language like Elixir, or you can use something like iterate and closure. Whatever your functional programming language is, there's probably a way to do this. Anyway, that's how you might think about doing it if you need to generate a collection of numbers. But don't worry about that for now. Just go ahead and then it doesn't even have to be a functional programming language, just your language of choice. Go ahead and try out map, filter, and reduce. And whenever you feel like it, move over to a functional language and see if you can continue to use them there. So there you go. Whenever you need to deal with the collection, don't freak out. It can seem daunting at first, but really just use one of these functions that's built into the language and you should be fine most of the time. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where map, filter, reduce, and all of the other functions in your functional programming languages standard library don't seem to be working out for you, and you don't feel like generating a collection, maybe the code just isn't elegant enough, we'll talk about how to address that in the next video. So go ahead and stay tuned for that.